Okay. Hi friends. A very short update today. I'm doing a special review on the movie called Messiah 2030. I was asked by them to take some time out and to basically to review their production which is about two hours long very well documented presentation on this fascination with the seven day creation story so basically for some of you who are unaware as to the seven day creation story in relation to bible prophecy the seven day biblical creation story is a foundational account of the origins of the world yes as told in the book of genesis in the bible so this narrative has been a source of wonder inspiration and debate for centuries shaping religious beliefs and scientific inquiry alike but while the genesis account presents a poetic and symbolic portrayal of the universe formation it's biblical history it, this is biblical truth for us it doesn't change the fact that it's also been subject to various interpretations over time and even criticism sparking ongoing discussions about the relationship between faith and reason myth and fact and the role of human beings in the cosmos <laughs> I got myself a script here to read but going back to what I was saying it's important to note that the seven day creation account let me just turn the volume down I don't know if you can hear it the seven day creation account in the book of Genesis does not necessarily give the date of the return of Christ but there are those who study the Bible and the creation account in particular who have suggested friends that the creation story can be seen as a foreshadowing of God's plan for redemption and restoration, culminating in the coming of Christ. How marvellous. So according to this view, and if you just do a simple search online, their fascination in prophecy land and those who study the Bible diligently, it's endless, isn't it? Seven days of creation. According to this view, the seven days of creation represents a symbolic pattern of God's work in the world. And you know what, friends? I think they're right. I think there's something into this. I spent time listening to this whole video, this movie documentary style. And can I say, it's so well put together. This is it right here. I will put the link in the description box. And I would just urge everybody who's listening to me right now and if you consider yourself a really stu a very serious student of bible prophecy me included i'm a student forever learning you have to take time and check this out honestly there's something in this that i think warrants our further investigation into this timeline right I know this view isn't universally accepted, but I don't think it necessarily has to be, friends. Let me read what they have written here. Dozens of biblical prophecies predicted the precise year of the Messiah's first coming. Those prophecies were correct. He came right on time. Those exact same prophecies predict the precise year of his return, and it is soon. Wow, I was taking some notes. Let me zoom in a bit. Because I want us to just pause for a second and consider this, right? Most scholars, like I was saying, they believe the church age began around 30 AD, right? Give or take. So will the return of Christ be in 2030? Because that's 2000 years by then, yes? 
So if mankind has been given seven days or seven thousand years from Adam until the completion of human history on Judgment Day, then would this mean, friends, that we should expect Jesus to come back at this time in 2030? The timeline from Adam to Abraham was about 2,000 years. And then from Abraham to Christ was about 2,000 years, right? The Messianic age when Christ rules on earth is a Sabbath day of 1,000 years, the millennium reign, right, on earth. This leaves no more than 2,000 years for the church age to be completed before the second coming, enforcing the prophetic type of 2,000 year days as Hosea and John also predict. And I wrote down the scriptures here for us to have a look. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. He will revive us after two days. He will raise us up on the third day. At the end of the second day of John chapter 1, Jesus tells of his coming on the clouds. You will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So would this mean, friends, that at this time, right now, 2023, we have seven years until Christ returns? What do you think? This is just me speaking out loud with you, brainstorming, if you like. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 1, just to read these words, you guys, honestly, I get so excited. I'm just I'm longing for the return of the Lord. We have to be careful about putting timelines on things. You know why? Because of the experience we've had. You know, it's got a really bad reputation, rightly so. But we can't be ignorant. We've got to be wise. We have to rightly, rightly, correctly divide the word of truth. Yes? Let's read this portion. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. And the Lord Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And I want us to go on and read in Revelation chapter 19, the account that's recorded according to what John was shown. Verse 11, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. He's really coming back, you guys. Our Lord is returning. Let this sink in. There's coming a time when our eyes will behold him for real. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And when he comes, you guys, he's going to destroy our enemies. Those who are the persecutors of the saints, inspired and fueled and empowered by the dragon, the Lord Jesus is going to come and deal with his enemies on that day. 
Verse 19 reads, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Satan's bound for a thousand years. Verse 1, chapter 20, Revelation. <sighs> wow. <clears throat> Amazing. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. The thousand years will end eventually. And after these things, he must be released for a while. And I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. You know the rest of the story, you guys. Our God is victorious. He is the victor already. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Nevertheless, friends, I will leave the description to this prophetic messianic timeline. Please take some time out this weekend and watch it. Messiah 2030, the prophetic messianic timeline. Wow, could it be, friends? <clears throat> I mean, we're always looking forward to the return of the Lord. We diligently seek the scriptures, and there are those who have really, really spent time and effort diligently seeking the truth, and they've put their work together, and I think it's only right that we check it out. I'll be back again soon. I have so much to share with you, I mean a lot, so stay tuned, until then, lots of love. <laughs>